If you're someone like me who creates documentaries in DaVinci Resolve, well, this video is going to be for you. Because in this one, I found a very nice technique that is based on lighting, but it can work with any different motion graphics that you want, basically. So in this video, I will cover how to create this specific animation. But in this one, you will learn the lighting technique being used in a lot of different, you can say, documentaries on YouTube. So with that being said, let's dive in. So let's begin. First of all, I'm going to just drag in a fusion composition and let's head over to this fusion page. Now, right here, we're going to add this background, connect this with the media out. And also let's drag in this multi-merge. Okay, so for this one, we have two assets and you will find them from the link in the description. So the first one, which is this building, I'm going to drag this in and let's connect this. Actually, let me just remove this multi-merge and let's just use the regular merge like this because I will need to make some adjustments later on. So let's just keep them separate for now. Let's increase the size for this. Let's go with 1.7. Now let's also drag in this image and connect this with this merge node. And let me just move this to the back, move this downwards so that, you know, this is not empty. The space is not empty over here. And now we need to add in a color corrector. So for this one, just change the saturation to zero. And now let's go ahead and add in this polygon mask. And this polygon mask is basically what we're going to use to reveal this person right here. Now you can do this in this way by connecting this with the media in two which is basically the image, and then just drawing a random shape like this. So right now, as you can see, it shows the face, and that's what we want at the moment. And now let's go ahead and, and make sure that this is selected. So right click here for shape animation, this option is selected, but this needs to be right here at zero. So make sure to add this right here, and you can, of course, delete this one from this side. So make sure this is at zero, zero frames. We have this. And let's also add in a fast noise. Connect this with the merge tool. Now, what this will do is, of course, we need to adjust this. So let's click on it and increase the detail and the contrast. So what this will do is it will give us this kind of an outline and you can increase the size, but I would recommend to just keep this at two, around two somewhere. And then you can just use angle to change the shape maybe. So let's just go with 60 and move this right here. All right. Okay, so now that we are at zero, let's go over at nine frames and create a keyframe at this polygon right here at, right click here for shape animation. Now right here, one frame later, right here at 10. Now let's go ahead and reveal this even more. So for, for example, something like this. And now you will notice that the fast noise is messing this up. So we also need to animate the fast noise along with this. So right here at nine, let's create a keyframe. Make sure you select the fast noise and create a keyframe at center. And also you can create one at angle. Now over here at 10, let's move this right here, change the angle again, somewhere around here. And of course, this will depend uh, on your image as well. So if you want to only have an effect right here and not on maybe on the face, then go for this one because that's what I'm doing in this video, basically showing you how this reveal thing works. But of course, you can make some changes, do this on your own way. Right now, this is the way that I'm doing. So, okay, if you see this now, this is the first reveal, as you can see. Now, right here, add maybe 30. Let's do another one. Let's go ahead and select the polygon once again. Make sure to create a keyframe right here, and then add 30. Let's move this even further. So we're going to do the same thing that we did before with the fast noise. 
and right here at 29 let's create a keyframe at center and then angle then at 30 let's move this even further and also change the angle so something like this and then finally at 40 not 39 i'm going to create another another keyframe and then let's create another keyframe at center and then at angle and then finally at 40 let's reveal this fully so there we go and now for the fast noise we just need to get done with this so what we can do is let's just move this right here but then you will notice that okay this is coming up right here so what do we do now well basically you need to go over to the color tab and then right here at 39 make sure to create a keyframe at alpha so create a keyframe at alpha and then at 40 you can just change this to one so if you play this now this is how it looks so here you have this character animation you can say and you can use this for any image that you want now let's add some more animation to this so select your merge tool and then right here where we have this reveal done let's go over at 50 frames create a keyframe at center and size now let's go over at 60 change the size let's just go with 1.3 actually let's go with 1.5 and then move this slightly down so something like this yeah and right here i'm going to just make this go down even further and let's go over to spline and then from here we can just select the merge and the displacement select both of these and then ease them in by pressing s on the keyboard so if you play this now this is how it looks and now we're going to add maybe like a line so for this let's add in a background change this to red also add this polygon and right now let me just add this line right here connect this with the background and then the background with the color character now we need to change the border width so let's go with something right here and you can select this option from here modify only to change this line now let's go ahead and add a displacement underneath this panel so you can just press Control space search for displace and then this will be added now let's add in a fast noise connect this with the displace yes connect this with the displace and then using the fast noise change the detail and the contrast and then the scale and actually let's go over to the polygon and i'm going to change this border style to flat now you will see that we get this you can say texture kind of line and you can just adjust this so make sure when you're using this fast noise just set the detail and contrast to 10 and 5 and now you can just use scale to get whatever sort of shape that you want so i'm just going with three so it's up to you but this is the one that i'm using so it gets the job done now what we need to do is animate this so right here we need to reveal this so maybe let's say at 70 i'm going to well actually let's go over at 80 and i'm going to create a keyframe at length and then at 70 i'm just going to change this to zero so something like this now let's also go over to the merge once again which is basically the image of the person and then we can go over at 60. actually we already have this y keyframe done so we can just go all the way to the end and just move this a little bit down so that it seems like it's having some sort of an animation but now we need to do the same thing for this line as well so go over to polygon and then right here at 70 let's create a keyframe at center and then go all the way to the end and move this down as well slightly so here you can see and and this is basically random you don't need to set a specific value for example you can just do this random it, it's a subtle effect so it won't matter if it's slightly off so right now we have this animation done as you can see but let's add some more dynamic look to it by going over to maybe let's say adding a transition highlight so this is something that i found very interesting if we go over to the 
Okay, let's just select the color corrector and go ahead and add this brightness and contrast. So the reason I'm adding it in this section is so that we can affect both the images. And we don't need to affect this highlight, let's say. So that's why this is at this position. And now what we can do is right here where we have this animation. So for example, let's say at 50, let's create a keyframe at gain. And then let's go all the way to 65, increase this maybe to two, and then at 70, let's bring this back to one. So if you play this, yeah, you can see this is how it looks. Now, just so that we can have more natural effect, let's just go with two exactly. So if you play this, yeah, you can see. Actually, it does seem like it is being there for a long time. So I'm just going to test this at 60. At 60 frames, let's just go with two. And then at 65, let's let's go back to one. And then at 70, let's remove this. So let me just see. Okay, perfect. So this works better for me. So in the brightness, go over when you need to set the gain, go over to 50 frames. Create a keyframe and then go over to 60, change the gain to 2, and then at 65, bring this back to 1. So this is basically the setting that I'm going with, as you can see. Now for the final effect. Actually, we also have one more effect, which is the text. So let's just add that. And then finally, I will show you the light effect that I'm talking about. Okay, so for the text, let's go right here, add a background and then also this rectangle. Connect the rectangle with the background and background with the merge right here. And now you can adjust this. So something like this, 0 0.6, 0 0.1, and then just move this right here. And now let's add in a text. So let's just type in any text. So let's just, Type in something like this. Bring this to the highlight that we created. Make sure this is right there at the center. All right, perfect. Now we need to also animate this. So over here at 80, or let's say 90, I'm going to bring this in. So first of all, I'm going to bring this rectangle in. Or actually, let's bring this in at 80. So create a keyframe at 80 frames and then at 70. Let's move this Y down. And when it's in, let's go over at 90, go over to text, and we can just add in a right on effect at 80 to 90. So something like this. So we have the text done as well. And by the way, you can always go over to spline and ease this in. So let's do that. Let's go over to the rectangle one and just select the keyframes and then hit S on the keyboard. So this is basically it. Perfect. Okay, one more thing before I add the, you can say light effect, you can go over to this merge one, which is basically the buildings in the background and change the blend a little bit so that it looks like it's in the background. I'm going with 0 0.7. Yes, so at 0 0.7, this looks good. And finally, now for the light effect. So just select your final merge. For me, it's merge five. And now let's add in this brightness. So once again, we already have this brightness, but we were not going to use this because we need to show this on the whole, you can say scene. But if you want to only highlight maybe the person and the building, not the text, you can use this brightness as well. That's up to you. But I'm going to, do this for the whole scene. So for this one, I'm also going to add a polygon and connect this with the brightness. Now with the polygon selected, I'm going to just create this sort of a shape, something like this, and make sure you have this selected, modify only, and then you can just adjust this accordingly. So something like this, yeah. All right, so now if you go over to the brightness, let's change the gain, let's say. And right now you will notice that 
okay, we're getting this rough edge. So let's go right here and change the soft edge all the way to 0 0.2. And go back to the brightness and let's, actually let's go in the negative direction. So let's go with 0 0.6 maybe or 0 0.5. And then you can go over to the polygon and just click on invert. So what this will do is it won't add that flashy effect. It will just make sure that the other parts are in the dark and the one that you need to highlight are the only ones being shown. So you can of course go lower or you can increase this, that's up to you. But for now I'm just going with 0 0.5. And for example, if I go over to polygon and I use the Z rotation, you will notice the difference. And by the way, you can animate using the Z rotation, that's up to you. But the way that I'm going to do this is by using this right click here for shape animation. So select your polygon, then let's go over at zero, make sure that there is a keyframe created. Then let's go over at 10. All right, and let's select only these two and move this up. Then go over at 20, move this down. And actually this one right here, I'm just going to remove this for now so that we don't mess up anything. And right here at 50 maybe, let's move this up again. So it's a slow animation. Then at, let's say 70, let's move this down a little bit. Then at 90. And of course, this is random. This is up to you. And finally, at the end, I'm just going to bring this to the center. And actually, I'm going to select this, move this right here, and then select this and move this right here so that the whole scene is showing at the end. So this is basically it. And if you go back to the main timeline and play this, here you can see we have that highlighting effect, or you can say light effect in the background. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.